and I'll switch that to a minus I don't have enough space. Okay, right now I'm going to serve you guys the dessert. We are going to integrate e to the negative bx times sine x dx. And you may be wondering, that was the appetizer, wasn't it? Yes, but this time we'll integrate this with complex numbers. And this is usually called the complexifying the integral. I will show you guys how it works. First of all, we notice that we have an exponential part, namely e to the negative bx. And we'll solve the sine x right here. Now, recall from the Euler's formula, it does involve the e to the something and also sine, right? And let me write it down for you guys on the side. I'm going to use x for my input so that it can match with this x right here. Okay, Euler's formula says we know that e to the ix is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. And from the original integral, you see that we had this sine x. And from the Euler's formula, the sine x right here, this is what we call the imaginary part because this is the one that next to this i, right? This is the real part and this is the imaginary part, just like a regular complex number a plus bi, right? Okay, so if you just want to focus on sine x, what we are going to do is we can just call out the imaginary part. That's the i n, all right? Imaginary part. If I just want to call out the, the imaginary part of the right-hand side, we are talking about the sine x. And I'm going to do the same thing on the left-hand side. And in fact, this is much better on the left-hand side because I want to focus on how to use the exponential part to help us integrate. So here is the punchline. This right here, what we're trying to do is we are trying to say that sine x is just the same as the imaginary part of e to the i x and now instead of the sine x right here i will replace this right here with the i m e to the i x like this okay and i'm going to write this down for you guys and here we go we have this integral and then we have this e to the negative bx they stay the same for now and for the sine x we know that this is the same as the imaginary part of e to the i x and what we can do is, we can just focus on the imaginary part of whatever this is going to be when you replace this with e to the i x inside like that, all right? And we still have to integrate, so we still have to put on dx and then parentheses for that, okay? You see, this is why it's called the complexifying the integral because we introduce the complex number, all right? And this is so much better because we are just integrating e to the something. And now, let's go ahead and continue. We have the i m right here, and we still have the integral, of course. They have the same base, so I can just say this is e. I'm going to combine the powers by adding them together. They both have the x. I will factor that and put it at the end. This right here is parentheses negative b plus i, and then the x right here, and then we still have the dx, of course. Okay. Focus on the integral first, and let me ask you, how can we integrate e to the 3x? You know it's just e to the 3x, and then multiply by 1 over 3. Now, you see, this is just pretty much like a number, just like the 3. So to integrate this, this is pretty much the same as a, we repeat e to the negative b plus i, and then the x right here, and we just have to divide it by this right here, right? So I'll put it down as 1 over negative b, plus i in the front like this. And we still have to focus on the imaginary part of whatever we are going to get from here. And notice, we did the integral already. However, don't put down a plus c or whatsoever. Just don't do it. We are not done with the original integral, right? Put down the plus c all the way at the end. And in fact, I can show you guys how to kill two birds with one stone. I'll tell you guys that at the end. But anyway, we well, have two things to consider. The first thing is 1 over negative b plus i. This right here, it is a complex number, but it's not in the standard form. It's okay, because we know how to fix these kind of things. All we have to do is just multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate, right? So I will multiply the bottom by negative b but I will just change the plus in between right here to a minus. So negative b minus i like this. 
And we do the same on the top, so we multiply this by negative b minus i like that, okay? And if you prefer, let's focus on this part first. I'm taking, I will take up this in a second, all right? So we are still looking for the imaginary part. So let me just write it down. I am. And we can multiply this on the bottom, whichever way that you would like. Perhaps the easiest way you know this is going to be a squared minus b squared, right? The first thing squared minus the second thing squared. The first thing right here is negative b. So put negative b in the parentheses and square that, you get positive b squared. And then minus the second thing squared. So you are going to get minus i squared. And you know i squared is equal to negative 1. Therefore, minus negative 1, it becomes plus 1, okay? On the top, 1 times this is, of course, just that. So we can write down negative b minus i. And yes, I know this is still not in the standard form of a complex number yet, but this is the fix that we just did, all right? Now, let's move on to this part here. What's e to the negative b plus i in the parentheses and then times x? This is the same as that, right? And you know once you have e to the ix, we can just use the Euler's formula again. Okay, so here is the deal. We have e to the negative bx right here, right? So I'll just write this down first. This is the same as saying negative bx and then plus ix, like that, for the exponent, okay? So we first have e to the negative bx, so let me just say we are multiplying this with e to the negative bx. And next, we have to multiply by e to the ix, which is the same as cosine x plus i sin x. So I will just put this down in blue. We multiply this by cosine x plus i sin x, like this. And I have to close this with the red marker for the i m. Once again, this right here is because we have the e to the ix, which is pretty much like that, and then it's the same as that. Okay, now, <laughs> what exactly is this going on? Hmm. First of all, this right here was, was still not done simplifying yet, and you do have to notice, though, we have this times this times that. And let's first take out all the real numbers, all right? The real whatever. <laughs> First, you see that we have e to the negative bx. This right here has no i. We're just multiplying this with this and that. I can just bring that all the way to the front and then just you know, leave it alone for now. So I will put this down as following. This is equal to, I'll write this down, e to the negative bx, right? And also, if you look at the first part, this fraction, we had the over b squared plus 1. And once again, <laughs> this right here is just a regular number, okay? So I'm going to factor that out as well. I will put it down as over b squared plus 1. Of course, that was in the denominator, so it stays in the denominator, okay? Now, this has to stay inside. This also has to stay inside for the i m. We'll see. We are going to multiply this with the imaginary part of whatever you would multiply this and that, okay? First, we have this negative b minus i, and second we have this, cosine x plus i sine x. Well, this is pretty much like a complex number times another complex number. We just have to multiply it out and then collect the real part and then the complex, I uh, mean the imaginary part. I cannot say complex part, otherwise people, is going to, uh, people are going to roast me in the comment section. Anyway, this is equal to the following, all right? This is still all the way in the front, so let's go ahead and put that down, and perhaps I'll just draw the box like that. Okay, we have e to the negative bx over b squared plus 1, and of course, we just have to multiply this and that, and by the way, let me just put down the i m, this times this, which is negative b times cosine x, all right? So we have negative b cosine x, and then this times that, we have negative b times i sine x. I'm going to write it down as negative i first, okay? Let me just put on i first and then b. And then sine x after that, okay? 
And next, we take this times that, which is negative i cosine x. So we minus i cosine x. And lastly, we do this times that. First, you see negative times ne negative times positive is negative. i times i is i squared. And let me just write that down right here. Okay, this is i squared. And of course, we have the sine x at the end. So put that down right here. And I'll close this in red, just like that. Okay, what do we do next? Collect all the terms that has i and collect all the terms that don't have i. But before you do that, you see this is i squared. Once again, this is just negative 1. And technically, negative, negative 1 becomes positive, right? Okay, let me just write this down for you guys. Again, we have e to the negative bx over b squared plus 1. And then we are looking for the imaginary part of this. Okay, the terms that they don't have the i, namely the real part, is this. This is negative b cosine x. And then plus, right, this is going to be plus sine x. So let's write that down. We have negative b cosine x. And once again, this is a plus, negative times negative is plus, And we just have sine x right here. All right, this right here is the real part. Next, we have the imaginary part. So it's coming up. We have the i right here. And to do so, I'm going to write it down as following, okay? I'm going to say I'm going to add. I'm going to factor out the i, of course. And I will open a parenthesis. Technically, I should put a little parenthesis like that. Now, for this parenthesis, first of all, I will have negative sine x left. Well, technically, sorry. Negative b sine x. Negative b and also the sine x. Okay? And next, I have this negative and also cosine x. So we have minus cosine x. Okay. Now, everything's ready to go because this right here is still for this. Negative um, e to the negative bx over b squared plus 1 times. Which one is the imaginary part? This was the real. This is the imaginary. I'm just calling out this part only. Do not put down the i though. So I'm just going to say we are going to multiply by this only. Okay? So this is negative b times sine x minus cosine x. Just like that. And if you just keep track, of all the equal sign that was in fact the original integral so uh, we can put down plus c right here already i will do that okay so right here this integral is that and in the appetizer video i think i factored out the negative which you know you can just totally do that no big deal anyway as i told you guys earlier that I'm going to kill two birds with one stone, right? So you see, this right here is for that integral. I can show you guys with another integral real quick. Based on the computation we have already, I can also tell you what's the integral. Let me just put down note. If you really want to find the integral of e to the negative bx times cosine x instead, all right? This right here, remember cosine x is the real part of e to the ix. So all I need to do is, instead of the i m, I just have to look for the r e, okay? This right here is the same as saying e to the negative bx over b squared plus 1 times the real part of this thing right here, right? So I'm just going to put down uh, da da da, just this part right here. <laughs> so at the end, you know this is going to be e to the negative bx over b squared plus 1. And the real part of all of that is just this. So I'm just going to copy this down for you guys. So parentheses negative b cosine x plus sine x. This integral is this, right? That's the result. Of course, at the end, you also put on plus c. Okay? So I have this like a little bonus integral for you guys as well. But anyway, this was what we were looking for. And this is the, this is a little bonus. That's it.
Thank you.